How does a 17-year-old Girl Scout and high school senior make a difference for a small group of women in the Dominican Republic? During the summer of 2016, I traveled to the Dominican Republic on a school community service trip. But this community service, I learned, would be very different. As I traveled to an unknown country for my first international trip, I was a little nervous, but very excited. On the first full day in Puerto Plata, we were bused into the El Javier community. I was far from home and in a place that looked nothing like where I lived, a community of extreme poverty. It was truly a culture shock. As we approached a small white house, we heard singing. Singing? Why was there singing? How were these women so positive, joyful, and thankful for our arrival? In the midst of a decaying community, there's an amazing group of women known to me now as Ray Papel. As we were quickly welcomed with songs and hugs and put to work learning about the paper making process. We spent the next three hours tearing, pulping, screening, and smoothing paper. I learned that Ray Papel means recycled paper. I love that these women have created a business of making recycled paper goods, items that enable them to care for themselves and their family. Once we left, I just couldn't stop thinking about the experience. The, these ladies had the biggest hearts and were making Ray Papel a success, showing that stepping out of your comfort zone is possible no matter your circumstance. Their genuine generosity of spirit and love for what they do poured right into me. I was inspired, but didn't know how to channel it into action. As a lifelong Girl Scout, the Gold Award was always important to me. The Gold Award is all about taking action, allowing me to demonstrate leadership in developing a sustainable solution to a global issue. It started with one small step out of my comfort zone towards action. I thought to myself, how could I make an impact with the ladies of Ray Papel? Why would they listen to me? I was only 15 years old, but I had an idea. What if I could improve even one part of the paper making process? When I was helping on site, I noticed that the smoothing of the paper took the most effort. If the quality of the finished paper was better, could it have additional uses? They were using the bottom of old deodorant containers to smooth the raw paper. What if I could create a tool that would improve the smoothing process and was also durable? At first, I had to work with them to find out if they even wanted help. I didn't want to assume that my idea was one they wanted or even needed. I wanted to empower the woman to be a part of their own solution. I was determined that my age would not limit me. I began by sharing my big ideas with friends and family. And when I explained the problem I wanted to solve, they had great ideas on how to help. I was excited to think that my idea would finally come to fruition. But my excitement was soon dampened because the tool would take nearly a year to build. I stepped out of my comfort zone again by reaching out to a second company. And they were able to help me develop a different version of the tool. But when I tried it, it didn't work. At this point, I wanted to give up. Nothing seemed to be working. But with all great ideas, it takes time, trial, and error. Nearly a year after the first conversation about des designing a tool, the first company I reached out to reached out with good news. The tool they were building was ready. I finally had one that worked. Now that I had the tool in hand, I was ready to head back to the Dominican Republic to share the tool with the ladies of Ray Papel. Fear started to creep in. I had a lot of fear taking on something bigger than myself. But fear can hold you back or propel you towards something greater. You must decide which. I had to use my fear to propel me, to bring my idea of helping to reality. When we arrived back in Puerto Plata, I started to doubt myself again. Once I realized that our translator would not be on site, I was scared. I thought I'd gone all the way back 
and all of my effort would be wasted because I couldn't explain how to use the tool. You see, they do not speak English and I do not speak Spanish, but the look on their face told me everything I needed to know. I couldn't wait for them to try out the tool. It only took moments to know the tool would make the impact I hoped it would. Being back, it felt like it hadn't been three years since the last visit. Thankfully, the ladies loved how much easier the smoothing process was with the new tool. The best reward of all, however, was spending time one-on-one -on -one with the ladies, getting to know them on a deeper level, having a meal, and meeting their granddaughters. I knew I was right where I was supposed to be. I thought I was the one improving something for someone else, but I was really the one being impacted the most. Because when you give of yourself, you get more than you give. Looking back, I realized just how much I accomplished. And it all started with one small step out of my comfort zone towards action. The path to progress starts with one small step and then another and another. At first, it feels like you haven't come very far or made much progress. Sometimes you have setbacks and failures, but you must choose to not let those things stop you. No matter who you are, how old you are, or what means you have, if you see how something could be improved, don't just think about it, take action.